guys, my name is Amber and welcome to my channel. So today, based on a need I've seen, I'm going to be talking about how to do a basic men's haircut. Now, I can get a little long-winded in my explanations as people have told me in my other how to color your hair or I did a how to foil your hair and how to trim your bangs. If you guys are interested in either one of those videos, I'll put cards up here for those. Um, I can get a little long-winded because I want to explain things to do and not to do, but if you just want to see the demo, feel free to skip ahead because I know I can get a little bit chatty. I've had a few requests to do haircuts while everyone is in quarantine and hair salons have been shut down, and as much as I wish that I could help everybody out, I just can't go out and go to people's homes and cut everybody's hair. Now, I have been able to do my family's hair. Those have been close to me who have been in close contact with me but I am not offering services to people outside of my family. So recently I had some requests to make a tutorial on how to cut men's hair. There's a lot of people who already cut their husband's or their kid's hair at home, and there are some tips and tricks that maybe people do that are different than what I do. Although I do cut men's hair, my specialty is in women's hair and color, so I'm not gonna say that I'm like the world's best barber or anything, but I feel like I can do a decent job at a men's haircut. So I'm going to be showing you the way that I typically would cut a man's hair and then I will show you and explain some ways that you could do things a little differently to make it a little easier based on your ability and what you have available to you. And um, I didn't really plan on doing this video until my brother asked for a haircut and I was like, sure. And then um, we started talking about people wanting to see how to cut hair and one thing turns into another. So we just randomly filmed it on my phone. I will um, insert some clips of footage, but I thought it might be helpful for some of you who are stuck at home and your husbands are still working and you're needing some way to cut their hair and you just don't know anywhere to start. So the first thing you're going to need to do a haircut at home is a set of clippers. So my last day at work, we actually had an earthquake here in Utah. So I did not have a chance to go and get my clippers from work. And so I have a very nice set of professional clippers that I didn't have access to. My salon is closed. I'm not allowed to go in there and get anything. So my sister brought over her clippers, which is probably the $30 Walmart special. So if you have something that looks like this at home, this is actually what I'm going to be using. So same, same. <laughs> I actually would suggest on investing in a better pair like a Wall or Oster. These are Remington. Um, although they did do a fine job on cutting my brother's hair, um, they didn't do very well on thicker hair. So if you're gonna go with a really cheap pair of clippers, what you're gonna get is a lot of clogging, a lot of missed hairs, and you're gonna start clipping and it's gonna like, and it's just it's just not gonna be a good time. So it is worth it if you're thinking, well, why is there some for 20 and why is there some for 100? It is worth it to spend a little bit more money to cut hair. Now, if someone's hair is really short already, something like this for a quick touch up is going to be fine. And that's how it was for me today. But if you're going to be cutting hair from longer to short, I mean like an inch to like really short, you're going to want to make sure you get something decent. I'm not sure what stores are open right now, but I'm sure on Amazon you could find something like Wall or like I said, the Oster brand, which would be better than something you'd find like Target or Walmart. That being said, you're going to have all these little clips that are your guides. And so most men who get their haircut will know like, oh, I like a number two on the sides and I like a this on the top or that or that. So basically what you want to do with this is you want to make sure that your blades are even. If your blades are off at all, you can nick somebody. So you want to make sure that that's not an issue. And then you're going to just snap whatever size blade you want on like this. So this one is a number two, which is a fourth inch. And so you want to kind of think about how short you want the hair. If you're nervous, go longer than what you think because you can always go shorter. Don't jump in there with a number one if you're not sure exactly what you're doing or if it's your first time. You can just go something that's going to be like a little bit shorter than what you have just to kind of get practice and even go through it and cut it again with a little shorter one afterwards when you're getting a little more confident, a little more comfortable with what you're doing. So the guard that I used in the tutorial was a number one because he has more of a military style haircut. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. But I mean, there's lots of different sizes and all of them should say on there how long they are. So this is a half inch. The number three is three eighths of an inch. And you can use the clippers for everything, but I am going to show you how to do scissors. So if you want to learn how to do scissors on the top, I will show you how to do that. People have asked me about scissor recommendations. I would say get some. <laughs> Don't buy scissors that are $10. <laughs> you can get a probably a decent pair of hair cutting scissors. If they say they're for cutting hair, they should be okay. 
be wary of ones that have like the plastic handles. If you're getting one that's an all metal shear, it should be fine, especially if it's in like the $30, $50 range. But if you're getting ones that have those plastic handles, that's probably not gonna cut much more than like doll's hair. <laughs> I mean, obviously mine are professional quality. These are Olivia Garden because I work as a stylist. But for someone who's just cutting at home, I would say $20, $30 up to the $50 range to me is worth an investment if you're gonna be doing it all the time, if you want it to look good. Now, why do you care about scissors? Because if your scissors aren't sharp, then what they're gonna do is they're gonna tear the hair instead of cutting it evenly, which is gonna cause more split ends. If you're working on men's hair, maybe it doesn't matter, but just so you know, that's why sharper is better. Also, you don't want that <laughs> hacking through. It's gonna make your job much easier if the scissors actually cut, because there's nothing worse than dull shears because every time you try to cut the hair, if it's not sharp, it'll push the hair down and you're like, oh, this is so annoying. And you're just having a battle back and forth like this, where if your scissors are sharp, it'll cut right through the hair. So if you're gonna be doing this for a little while, it's worth the investment. If you have really crappy materials, you're gonna be frustrated. So just do yourself a favor that way. Now I don't have any trimmers, so I did use these to trim the back of his neck, but if you want to get trimmers, those will just make it cleaner and easier, but you can do it with your trimmers and I will show you how to do that. So the first thing you want to do is just assess how does our hair look and how much do I want to take off? Are there any areas that I need to be aware of? So things you want to be aware of is cowlicks, which is where the hair grows in different directions. And you also want to be aware of like any balding, receding areas and just normal hair growth patterns. The reasons why that's good to be aware of before you start so you don't start cutting it too short and then you get to a part where there's a calic and you're like oh shoot i don't know what to do with this now and then you get into a weird situation where if you identify that with a calic you either want to leave it long so it can be combed down or you want to cut it short so if it sticks up it's not going to be an issue so you kind of have to think is this a longer haircut on the top is it a shorter haircut on the top which way do you want to go also with along the front hairline a lot of men will have receding hair you don't want to go in there and start chopping all this off <laughs> so if they have it longer where it's longer in the front right now just be aware of that and maybe don't use the clippers on that part and trim it a little bit so that they're not going to have all that hair cut too short i know this is a lot to talk about and a little video but just trying to give you guys some tips so the first thing i do is i like to start on the back of the neck and i use my number one guard and so this is going to be one eighth of an inch so you're going to see that it has this little thing right here and what that does is it lifts it up a little bit so if you need to kind of make it a teensy bit longer that's what this little lever will do and then of course you have your on and off switch so i like to hold my clippers like this and I like to go in kind of strokes and go against the head like this and then go up. So what you'll notice when I'm cutting his hair is every person has what's called an occipital bone. So if you feel at the back of your head, that's where your head starts to round and go up. So what I like to do is I like to hold the clippers flat to the head all the way to where I get to the occipital bone. And the biggest mistake people make is they start following the round of the head and then they're like, oh, I don't know how to blend this. Where do I go now? Where if you just start taking your clippers and when it starts to round, you just pull them straight. What it's gonna do is automatically start to fade that hair in so you don't have a big line where you end up with like the bowl cut. 90% of the time when I see people do haircuts and they have a, like a really bad line is because they went too far up. I mean, obviously if you're doing a special stylist cut where you've got like a hard part or whatever, you know you're gonna go higher up but generally with like a man's faded taper is basically what i'd say this with like a medium fade not like a high fade that's basically what i'm talking about obviously if you've got it buzzed all the way up buzz it all the way up you know what i'm saying so on his hair that's exactly what i did i took the clippers and i started going back now i had to go over it a few times because these cheaper clippers tend to leave hairs and little patches behind so don't be afraid to go in there this way and then kind of go this way and kind of go back over it and make sure you're getting all those hairs. Also, when you're going behind the ear, I like to tuck the ear down and make sure that I'm getting in really close that way and go in different angles around the face. So I'd go in like, okay, that feels so weird doing this. I'm not shaving my head. Go in this way. A lot of times this part will get left long. So I'll go in right here and go up and kind of go around the ear that way. And that way you make sure you don't get any little hairs. Same thing on the side is I would just follow it 
and then as I start to get to the top of the head, then I just pull it more straight and I start to kind of make that blend. So I do that all the way around until, you know, I kind of get to about right here is where I, I leave it. And then I switch to the top. All right, so I'm gonna explain to you how I do the rest with scissors, and then I'll go back at the end and explain how I do it if you wanted to use clippers only. So the next thing I do after I start graduating up the sides is I move to the top. So I make what I call a guide, and a good guide length for most men's short haircut is finger length. I mean, so many guys just ask for finger length. So what you want to do is make sure when you're parting the hair that you're not taking a bunch of hair and scooping it all together, because if you do that, what you're going to end up with is peaks and valleys like this. So I like to make a thin parting, use my fingers, and then watch how your fingers are. So you pull your hair up. You want to make sure your fingers are straight because if you go like this or that, it's going to make it shorter or longer. And then I cut a guideline. So I would do that right down the center of the head. And then what I do is I turn my fingers like this and I take a thin parting of hair and you'll see that short piece in the middle then I just even it out and then I take a little thin piece in front of that and cut it to that guide again and I go all the way up. in the very front of his hair, he liked his hair longer. So when I pull that front piece of his hair back, it's over directing his hair, which automatically leaves it longer. So I pull the front up and keep it even with the top. And then I cut it straight and then it gives it that length that he likes in the front. So I would kind of leave the front and kind of just look at that last and, and see what you want to do with it before you just go in there and cut it. Cause the biggest mistake is people cut that front too short. So when in doubt, leave it out, leave it longer. <laughs> And then you can go back a little bit because if you cut that front part too short, it's all over. Like you're just, you know what I mean? It's just, it's over. So after I do that, I have the front top even, and then I have this weird thick part on the sides. So then I would go through and comb up the hair and I would do that same thing, but I'd be cutting that point off on the side. So I go through the sides, I go through the back and go through this side and cut all those off. Then you'll notice I still have a little bit of weight in between. So I'm going to do a technique. This is literally how I cut hair. So I don't know <laughs> what a better way to explain it because this is just the way I do it. But I do a method called scissor over comb. So I take my comb in and I take my scissors and as I'm comb, I snip it and then I move the comb up and I snip and this keeps my scissors from cutting too much. And that just makes like a little blending motion like this. Do, 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 do. So if you've cut hair before and you kind of know a little bit, this might make sense. If you've never cut hair before, you'll be like, what the heck is she talking about? But this is how I blend the hair and it, I'm taking essentially that short hair to the long hair and making it even. So when you pull up the hair on one end, you're going to see the hair you've cut on the top. And then on the other end, you're going to see the short hair that you've already cut and you're going to see a long part in the middle. All you're going to have to do is basically connect the dots, cut that part off that is from the short in between the short and the long pieces, cut that off around the head. So, Essentially, that's what I do. So when you're edging out the back hairline, this is where a lot of people can make mistakes because they start going like this and this and this and this and this and it gets too short. So I always like to make sure I stand back and look at it this way. It's really good to do this in front of a mirror. So I will take my clippers and I will kind of line it up and I'll make my first mark like this. And then I'll look at it, make sure that's even, and then I'll go a little bit and keep it level. And then what I'll do is I'll have them turn around and I'll look at them in the mirror and then I'll be able to be like, is that even? And it'll really show you if it's not even, you'll be able to see it. 
So then I have them turned back and always start down lower because like I said, it's going to be a little hard if you're not used to it, depending on the hairline they have, it may be hard to get it really straight. So I go across that and I kind of make a line. Then I flipped my clippers over with this completely flat. And then I clean up that line there and then I go around the ears. One thing I do with the ears too, is I kind of use my comb as a guide. That way I'm not getting um, any hair that I don't want. And also there's lots of little hairs that hide back here that are hard to see. So if you kind of comb the hair down and then take your clippers, you can kind of just trim around that. And in a lot of these kits, there is an ear taper. So like on this one, let me see. It actually has like a right ear, left ear taper. You could use those if you wanted to. I just don't ever use those. But yeah, you can kind of just trim around the ears and just make sure they're holding steady. And you want to make sure you don't go too far up and get a line like that because that's going to show really well. So you just want to kind of just softly, like kind of like you're painting, like just take a little, take a little, take a little, take a little, take a little and curve around and just little strokes instead of going in there. I mean, I'll go in there like, because if you go up too fast, your arm gets bumped and you go up, then, then you're kind of going to be like buzzing it, you know, and you just don't want to do that. So just kind of clean up around the ears. And then make sure your sideburns, you can kind of make sure those are even. A good way to do that is just have them look at you, kind of put your fingers out, and then you can see it. It's hard because sometimes you think, well, I'll just cut it to the bottom of the ear or this part of the ear, but everyone's ears aren't even, so that can throw you off. So you want to make sure visually that those look pretty good. But most men are pretty good about that. So if you say, I can't get your sideburns even, they'll probably be like, it's fine. They'll get their razors when they're shaven and clean that part up. So don't stress about that too much. Mostly you just want to clean it up enough that it can pass by until you can get it done and not completely screw it up. You know what I mean? Um, as long as you can get around the ears and get the neck trimmed, even if you just trim a little bit around here um, and leave the top longer, they'll be okay getting it through, combing it, you know, styling with a little extra gel or something to get them through so they can get it cut again. But like I said, kind of assess how long their hair is and then that will help you decide which guard to use. That way you're not going too short and it's hard to blend. The shorter you go, the harder it's going to be to blend it out. All right, so if I was doing this haircut with only clippers, what I'd do is I'd first choose how long I want the top to be. So let's say I want it to be a number five. That would be like a pretty short haircut. Um, let's see, a half an inch would be a number four. Okay, let's do number six. Number six is three-fourths. So I would take this three-fourths and I would do their whole head on the top here. Okay? Then I would take one just below this. So I'd take like a five or a four and I would do all of the hair right here. Okay? Do all of this and go all the way down and just kind of blend it all the way in. Then I would take whatever one I want to be the very shortest part, like a two or a three. And then I would go from the bottom and that's when I would do kind of that tapering motion. And that's going to automatically start to give you blend. So you would have your five here, you'd have your four here, and then you'd have it faded down to your two. So if you already have this part cut short, then you don't have to go through with the scissors and do all that stuff. So then you basically would have this part cut, this part cut, and then you would just take your clippers. And when you go like this, it'll start to fade it in. You don't want to start rounding with the head again. You just want to kind of pull up like that. And that's where you're going to find everyone's head shape is super different. Some men's heads are like this. Some men's heads are very, you know, very shaped. So it kind of depends on the person how it's going to look. And also the color of their hair, thickness of their hair, texture of their hair is all going to change. If they've been wearing a hat for five days, you might notice a line. Don't worry. It's, it's a hat line. It happens. I would say now it's not the time to like try new styles or go on to some wild thing. Just try to maintain what they have. And if they aren't used to having the haircut with clippers, I wouldn't, I would just say use the longest guard you have just to kind of clean it up a little bit and then go through and just try to trim the edges so you can get your best result. So anyway, I hope that was helpful for you guys to at least help guide you through a little bit on how to cut a men's hair. I mean, people go to school for a long time to do this. So this isn't going to be like an all inclusive how to barber kind of thing. I'm just trying to give you like a basic overview of what I do for a men's haircuts. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you guys next time.